Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Black News Now podcast. It is 9 p.m. on Thursday, October 19, 2023. Thank you for returning. If you're new to our Spotify or our YouTube channel, don't forget to follow us here and like and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate your support for the Black community. We start this podcast with news happening in Sudan. It has been six months since war returned to Sudan, and United Nations officials have revealed this week that up to 9,000 people have been killed. And that's not the only atrocity the Sudanese are living with. The war has displaced 4.5 million people so far. And more than 1 million of those people who have been displaced by the brutal war in Sudan are now refugees in neighboring African countries. In a report released this week from the Associated Press, the United Nations Secretary General said they're suffering from, quote, horrific humanitarian crises, including rapes and sexual assaults. Further complicating matters in the region is a recent outbreak of cholera, which is highly contagious. There have been 1,000 confirmed cases so far, and the official number keeps rising. Now, we at BlackNewsNow.com have been covering Sudan as we do with Africa and the diaspora, so it was important to get this update in because there is so much attention on Israel and Palestine, and the human rights violations and suffering happening in Sudan have not received as much attention as it deserves. And with the Israel-Palestine conflict ongoing, and so unpredictable at this point, I don't foresee the media in large giving more attention to Sudan, not that we can say much attention was paid beforehand in the United States. I'm going to show you this video report from Reuters, which shows how people are coping with the disaster of war in Sudan, which, as I mentioned, has forced millions of them to flee from their homes. Here's some of that report from Reuters. In Port Sudan, we suffer from lack of water. We have to buy drinking water and water for cooking, which is different. We have to pay for electricity. In Khartoum, we did not suffer from all this. Ahmed's husband, Omar Khalil, says one continuing lifeline is remittances sent by Sudanese people living abroad. This cannot last forever. A solution must be found. The conflict has brought Sudan's stagnant economy to its knees. Prices for products have soared as the currency has tumbled. The country is now having to draw on its scant resources to support its internally displaced population. Meanwhile, international aid efforts remain severely underfunded. According to the United Nations, by mid-August, just 25% had been provided of the $2.6 billion required for this year. I think it's also worth noting that there is more to this conflict than just two generals competing for control in Sudan and the younger country, South Sudan, which has been the narrative I've seen in mainstream media. But I've also seen a number of unsubstantiated claims or conspiracy theories, as I should probably clarify, accusing the United States of enabling war in Sudan to siphon oil. Sudan has also turned into a battleground between Ukraine and the Wagner Group. It's no secret the U.S. is sending aid for Ukraine to battle Russian forces, but it hasn't been quite apparent that this is really looking more like a proxy war between Western forces. With that being the U.S. and Ukraine, which has expressed a desire to be a NATO member, which Russian President Vladimir Putin has been strongly opposed to. But there has also been this assumption that the war in Ukraine is simply in Ukraine. And that's far from the truth. Take a look at this video from CNN, which shows some of the strategic combat taking place in Sudan, with involvement from Ukraine, including drone strikes. Nightfall in a war-torn neighborhood in the Sudanese city of Omdurman. You are watching a thermal imaging video depicting military forces equipped in high-tech gear, far more sophisticated than the Sudanese have demonstrated to date. And here, a series of high-precision daytime strikes raining down from the sky in and around the same city, hitting targets backed by Russia's Wagner mercenary group in Sudan. A Ukrainian military source told CNN this is the work of a foreign military. Pressed on whether they would say unequivocally that Kyiv was behind the attacks, the source would only say that Ukrainian special services were likely responsible, which would constitute a dramatic expansion in Kyiv's theater of war against Moscow. Previous CNN investigations exposed that the Sudanese paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, RSF, has been heavily backed by Wagner as they fight the Sudanese army in a war for dominance. CNN obtained a series of videos of the operation showing 14 different strikes on RSF weapons and equipment, 
believed to be provided by Wagner. We pinpointed seven different locations of the drone strikes in Omdurman, an RSF stronghold that has become a focal point of the conflict. And we geolocated footage of the night raid to the same city by identifying the buildings seen here. The drone video obtained by CNN had already been edited, but clues remain as to the identity of those behind the attacks. Text on the monitor of the drone controller seen here is in Ukrainian. Press to start recording. These commercially available drones are widely used by Ukrainian forces. They have a maximum video transmission range of around nine miles. That means we can tell that the pilots of the drones were in Sudan close by. It's a common tactic in Ukraine, but not so much in Sudan. Drone experts consulted by CNN said this is the first time drones like this have been deployed in this fashion in Africa. CNN shared the videos with a high-level source in Sudan's army for comment, who said they had no knowledge of a Ukrainian operation in Sudan and did not believe it was true. The reason we wanted to discuss this story is because, as awful as the devastation and loss of life is in Gaza, Sudan has been largely ignored. This latest conflict in Sudan has become more than just a flare-up. Thousands of lives have been lost and more are at risk with extreme poverty and disease outbreak, as mentioned earlier. The humanitarian crisis in Sudan deserves the rest of the world's eyes, just like Israel and Palestine. I can't help but hope that the Sudanese find a way to undermine the power structure that is repressing and killing their own people. Which I know that is also a tall order, to say the least. But the continuous loss of life and humanitarian crisis cannot continue for the sake of Sudan. But what do you think? Is the war in Sudan being ignored? And is the media attention focused on the Israel-Hamas conflict diverting attention from Sudan? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you haven't already, please don't forget to follow us here on Spotify and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to visit our blog at blacknewsnow.com, where you can find a link to this post and more content updated daily. Take care and God bless. Thank you.